I was born in 1954 in Detroit, Michigan, to first-generation German and Italian immigrants. I had a great childhood. I grew up in the 50s and the 60s during the auto boom in Detroit. My mother came from an Italian family of seven. My dad, a German family, an only child. Uh, my dad is still alive. He's 95 years old. It was two stark differences. My mother's family was like complete chaos. And we'd go over to my dad's house, and it was stone silence. But both, were, both had large extended families, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins. I grew up in a community of family, neighborhood, and the Catholic Church. As a kid, I was bused to a Catholic church in downtown Detroit, uh, from the east side of Detroit where we lived. It was the sweetest heart of Mary. Uh, that was close to 60 years ago. The church that early in my life seemed to plant seeds and a desire to know Christ and to originally serve as an altar boy. What I saw, heard, and smelled, incense and masks, the clothes that we wore, we spoke Latin, the tall, dark ceilings of the church, the stained glass, and all of the, the sacraments, uh, First Communion in particular. We prayed in school. I went to religion class. Uh, there were images of the stations of the cross that shaped my young life. And I remember all of this very fondly. So in 1968, my family moved to Seattle. I was 14 years old. 14 years old. Four years later, my parents were divorced. It was a difficult time for our family. Seattle was nothing like what we left in Detroit, family and community. The 60s, and, don't go away, Drake. The 60s and, <laughs> the 60s and 70s were volatile times, much like today. Assassinations, racial unrest in the Vietnam War. It was a hard time for me as a teenager at home and in school. I started using drugs and alcohol and barely made it through high school. Uh, but God put two Johns in my life, two Johns. The first was a guy named John Weber, a neighbor, dishonorably discharged from the army who faithfully shared the gospel with me, usually walking home from school. I was born again on February 23rd, 1971 at Newport High School. I was baptized on March 6th at Luther Burbank Park on Mercer Island uh, in Lake Washington in the snow. That's tomorrow. That's tomorrow, I think. I was part of what became known as the Jesus Revolution. I was a Jesus freak. I was on fire, but something happened. Something went wrong. My passion for the Lord went dim. I was a struggling young Christian. I came from a broken home. I had no church, no youth groups, no community of believers, no Pastor Phil. I was on my own. I, now I say that, I say that reverently toward any pastor who serves a church. I didn't have a pastor. There was no one in my life really to look up to from you know, a Christian leadership point of view. I remember the first time I read 1 Peter 5 it says we face an enemy looking for someone to, to devour and the sick feeling that I was that person. <clears throat> At 23 in 1977, I gave up. I gave up. I walked away, but the Lord didn't. Long story short, I walked away from a relationship with Christ. I gave into the fleshly passions of the world. I did what I wanted to do and gave into the culture around, gave into the culture around me I got married, had a son, and in 1992 was divorced. I remarried in 2000 to Tara. We have two daughters, Isabella, 20, and Ava, 18. I wandered for 32 years as a Christian, a born-again believer. But God has always been faithful, never forgetting to remind me who he is, oftentimes through near-death situations, consistently putting godly, godly men and women who showed up in my life. In 2009, while shoveling snow with a neighbor, I had what now seems like a godly appointed encounter with my next door neighbor, John Reed. James 519 comes, came to life. My brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings him back, whoever, whoever brings back a sinner, from his wandering will save his soul 
from death and will cover a multitude of sins. That was John Reed. The end of our driveways remain a place of fellowship and prayer. Crossroads Bible Church changed my life where I experienced rich Bible teaching, community, service to the Lord, and fellowship. A sermon Pastor Phil gave at CBC led me to Anthem to join Phil and Ligaya in the planting of Anthem Church, not feeling like I had any special role other than to just go. So here I am today, standing in the grace of God, <laughs> warts and all, in the heartbreak of everything that I've messed up in, my, in the heartbreak of everything that I've messed up in my life. Those I have hurt, and yet at the same time, standing in the joy of knowing the Lord, knowing that there is nothing I can do or have to do to make the mess of my past right. God took care of all that at Calgary on the cross. What I do know is that Jesus is the Lord, the sinless one who gave his life so that we might have life and life more abundantly than we can possibly imagine. Messes remain in my life, but I am reminded and comforted to know that it is God's mess, not that I should continue to sin so that grace would abound, but to look forward to the upward calling of Christ to take every thought captive in obedience to him, to cast all my anxiety on him because he cares for us cares for me, cares for us all, that his steadfast love endures forever to not give up or to give in. Today, the biggest challenge that I face is in the addiction and homelessness of my son, Joseph, who many of you know about. Um, but the situation with Joseph has taught me that we all struggle, young and old, and you never know what the person sitting next to you is going through. And from another John, a pastor in Lynchburg, uh, Virginia, I was texted this yesterday. He said, I encourage you to continue to use your free will to lift your son up in prayer. And in God's timing, this test your son is facing, in God's timing, this test your son is facing, this test your family is enduring, this test your faith is enduring, will one day be a testimony. I'm not sure what all that means or looks like exactly, but I do believe what Paul said when he wrote that in Christ, all things are possible, and it is he who strengthens me through the good, the bad, and the ugly.